Andrei Tarkovsky's 1966 Soviet historical epic, Andrei Rublev, opens with a man named Yefim attempting to leave town through a hot air balloon, right as a mob below begins to attack. Yefim's takeoff is a surprising success, as he escapes the turmoil below him, and he begins to relish in the sensation of flying, of coming closer to God. This you! <laughs> Tarkovsky's film offers a rather pessimistic view of the nature of the relationship between God and man, as in Yefim's attempt to effectively become closer to God, his balloon is struck down to the earth from which it came. In Tarkovsky's bleak vision of Russian history and culture, God is neither a source of satisfaction nor comfort. We want to reach God, and he will strike us down and put us in our place. It is our duty as Christians to worship him, but so long as we are here on the earth, he will remain silent and make us suffer. Through sacrifice, we suffer, and through suffering, we make ourselves martyrs day in and day out. The film reflects the socio-political turmoil that Russia experienced in the 15th century and the Soviet Union experienced in the 1960s. Людям просто напоминать надо почаще, что люди они, что русские, одна кровь, одна земля. Зло везде есть. Всегда найдутся охотники продать тебя за 30 серебряников. The film's thesis on God and art is reflected in the scene in which the icon painter, Andrei Rublev, meets the ghost of Theophanes, who admires the beauty of Rublev's iconography despite the conditions in which it was created. Tarkovsky ostensibly suggests that art flourishes under oppressive conditions, which metatextually and narcissistically imposes greater importance on Tarkovsky's own work. The iconographer's duty to serve God is to find the beauty of God in the worst of situations, as through finding the light in the darkness, we come closer to him. God makes us suffer, though. But rather than questioning his plan, Christians must hold their tongues and sacrifice their struggles in faith, struggles that God himself constructs through people in the earth. Art will survive long after the artist, in honor of the great and powerful God, who grants people suffering, all for the promise of the afterlife that may never actually come. Art exists to preserve God's beauty in a world corrupted by sin. Happiness must be sacrificed. This is why Andrei Rublev refuses sex with the sexually liberated pagans, despite being tempted to give in. For this reason, I deem him a holy incel. The celibacy is not voluntary, as he might think it is, for it is something socially imposed on him. He does not give in to his temptations towards the wicked woman because he does not believe God would allow it. Despite knowing happiness and or self-liberation can be achieved by resisting conformity to the established Christian order. Rublev eventually abandons his God-given talent of art, the one thing that brought him relative peace and the rigorous command of his own theological and existential self-harm. And he takes a vow of silence as a result of sinning. The sin that sparked this decision was murder in defense of a woman being raped by a bandit. His moral dilemma comes from clearly doing the right thing in his eyes, but the wrong thing in the eyes of God by defining his moral framework on his own terms, rather than relying on Christian dogma. His vow of silence is self-imposed punishment for entertaining enlightened thought. 
как увидел я, что тащит он ее. Ты посмотри. Ну, посмотри ты на нее. За грехи наши и зло человеческий облик приняла. Покушаешься на зло, на человеческую плоть покушаешься. Бог-то простит, только ты себе не прощай. Так и живи, меж великим прощением и собственным терзанием. His vow is a cyclical feedback loop, depriving himself of his connection to God for previously abandoning him in a moment of weakness. In truth, it was a moment of strength. Andre does eventually break his vow to console the weeping bellcaster in his arms in a rare moment of catharsis and surrender to the world instead of surrendering to God. Вот и пойдем мы с тобой вместе. Ты колокола лить, я иконы писать. The bell that this boy made was beautiful and magnificent, but it was art constructed under the threat of execution, once again reaffirming Tarkovsky's potential thesis. The film ends by celebrating the iconography of Andre Rublev in a sudden shift to Keller and the thunderous sounds of music and rain. God is raining down upon art. Nature is raining down upon beauty. The film suggests that we endure the suffering of the world to maintain faith in God, instead of freeing ourselves and giving into nature like the witches. And because we have faith in God, we must fear him to our core. Rublev judges the pagans, but also seems to know he has no moral grounds to judge them. They too are practicing their religion, one that appears to the outsider to be healthier. That's what he fears though, the fact that sin can be good. He killed a man to save a woman from rape. This was a noble feat, but he doesn't know why he feels so conflicted. Sexual autonomy is something he doesn't understand. Do I believe he wishes he could have had the woman like he wishes he could have had the pagan women? For sure. The holy incel wants what he cannot have, but he only can not have it because the incel creates an existentially destructive environment for himself in order to honor a god that clearly hates him. Tarkovsky too projects himself and his art onto Andrei Rublev and his art. He too makes himself into a religious martyr. Now, I'm using the term martyr quite loosely here. I'm not just referring to literal martyrs, those who sacrifice their lives in the name of God or whatever political and religious movement they're a part of. Such examples of martyrs include Jesus of Nazareth, Joan of Arc, and the 9-11 terrorist. Rather, I mean more broadly speaking, religious thinkers who adopt martyr-like principles in their everyday lives. Those who regard self-sacrifice as virtuous because it pleases God. I would make the argument that religious self-sacrifice can be a lesser form of martyrdom because it robs an individual of their own identity in addition to their interests, aspirations, and self-image, effectively killing them, all to please God, or more accurately, a system of government that exploits religious faith to impose power on the individual. This socially and self-imposed violence is detrimental to the individual and to their social groups. But because it is conflated with virtue, narcissism and pride tend to follow. Ступай в троицу. Пиши, пиши, пиши. Ступай, не бери греха на душу. Страшно, это грех искру Божью отвергать. At one point of time, I considered Andrei Rublev to be one of my favorite films. But nowadays, I grow irritated by Tarkovsky's masterful direction because it is at the service of propagating self-destructive messages of martyrdom. I related to that idea of self-sacrifice. I saw it to be virtuous. However, it is self-hatred resulting from the fact that the world and the God it constructs hate you. Bye. А похвалы сегодня хвалят, завтра ругают, за что еще вчера хвалили, а послезавтра забудут. И тебя забудут, и меня забудут, все позабудут. Суета и тлен все. Не такие вещи и то забывали. Все глупости и подлости род человеческий уже совершил. И теперь только повторяет их. <смех> так какая же она дева, если у нее сын? А? 
А, хотя у вас на Руси еще не такое бывает.